There's the latest batch of gold dried out. Okay, this is I. I did all this panning and working my uh, concentrates over again, and then uh, I panned it down and then sucker bottled it. And then I dumped out the sucker bottle, and here's what I got dried out. This is what I missed uh, panning in my uh, daily cleanups and accumulated. So I'm going to show you how my process is. And uh, you don't need all this uh, fancy uh, shaking tables and, and gold wheels and all the widgets and gadgets they like to sell you. Uh, I'll show you how you do it when uh, you don't have a lot of uh, money to clean your gold up with. Okay. It's not a, if, I, if I wanted any of that stuff, uh, I, I would definitely get it. You just don't need it. It's a waste of money, in my opinion. Those shaking tables are uh, like twenty twenty five thousand dollars What a waste. I get me a couple sheets of paper and the, the finest mesh screen you can find. Really fine. And you take that gold once it's dried out, hard to do with one hand. Whoops. All right. I learned to spill. You take that and you dump it on there. So now I've re poured it back on top of the screen. And all you do, shake it out a little bit. And there's your clean gold. You can take a paintbrush and brush a few of those rocks out. And it cleans up beautiful. Or what I usually do is I get it to this point and I just uh, throw it in the furnace and melt it. Now here's my results. I have the coarse material and there's the fine material. I can repan that and re-separate it. This stuff you don't really want to get it any cleaner than this because when you start looking at some of these pieces under a microscope they might look like a piece of black iron um, on one side but there'll be gold stuck to it on the other side so if you start to render this down and try to get it perfectly clean you start working against yourself so you only want to get it this clean and then this is a point where you add flux and put it in the uh, oven and, and melt it and you could do that as well with this. You could take that directly to the oven. Uh, a lot of that, same thing under a microscope, a lot of that black black sand material is going to be part of particles of gold stuck to it. And uh, by trying to separate it down to as fine as you can is uh, counterproductive. So this is about the point where I smelt it or um, separate it again and, and market it as uh, specimen gold. Well, today I'm just going to spill it into the bottle. How much do you think gold will? How much gold do you think will fit in one of these bottles right here? I think we should have a contest. You can guess how much gold it takes to fill up one of these. So yeah, that's right. You guess how much gold it takes to fill up one of these new bottles I found. Um, I got tired of filling up these bottles, and I found some at the Indian Trading Post, and uh, they had packets of four. So for this year, I'm filling up different style bottles. I don't know yet how much uh, gold it takes to fill one of these up, but uh, I'll show you, give you some something to work with here. Uh, got the tear weight there. That's the real fine material. Looks like six grams in that bottle. So that's probably three quarters black sand and a quarter gold. 
And so I'm trying to get close. I'm out, almost up to 100 subscribers. Um, YouTube gives you more tools to use for your channel when you hit 100 subscribers. I'm learning as I go here. So uh, I'm going to have a contest. Uh, I'm going to award a winner after I get to 100 subscribers. I'm going to send you some gold. If you're the one who can figure out how much gold it takes to fill up one of these bottles. I'm absolutely sure I can fill this bottle up after my next cleanup. And then we'll have a weigh-in. Thanks for watching.